We can't call the front-end development space exciting and fun if there wasn't a new library or framework hyped up every other month. Yes, it's annoying and frustrating, but it's also fun. Anyhow, it's August and we got a new framework showing up everywhere. Enter Fresh, the Dino-based next-gen web framework. In one of his recent talks, Ryan Dahl, the creator of both Node and Dino, mentions that FreshJS is not a mature web framework and they don't intend to promote or use it long term. It's more about experimenting and attempting to solve existing problems in a new, more efficient way. I advise you to check out his talk at RemixConf and you'll find the link in the description. I'm usually a late adapter when it comes to JS stuff and I doubt I'll ever end up using Fresh for anything production related. However, I think that Fresh and especially Dino come up with a couple of innovative approaches such as the island architecture or seamless deployments to the edge which will push the front-end space forward. In this video we'll build a small full-stack app where we'll explore some of the interesting concepts you should probably know regardless of your preferred framework. We'll start by setting up a Dino project using the fresh template and the command provided on their homepage. Installing the dependencies is a fast process. Note that I'm going to use Tailwind for styling for lack of a better solution. I'll get back to this in a second. Also Visual Studio Code is my preferred IDE and the installer will help with some small configuration for that. We'll use Dino task to start the project. Dino is still in its early stages, so some of the tools we'll be using are still in beta. Let's take a quick look at the project structure. Main and dev.ts files are the main entry point into the project depending on the environment you are running your app in. An interesting file here is the fresh.gen.ts. This is automatically generated based on the routes and the islands folder. Just like other frameworks such as Next.js or SvelteKit, Fresh uses file system routing so we can define that in the routes folder. Islands is where all the interactivity and magic happens since the code defined here can run on both client and the server. This will be one of our main topics in the next few minutes. I also want to mention the import map.json file which is a Dino import map. This is a nice little feature that improves the way dependencies are managed in JS projects. Let's start by creating some folders and files we'll need. Fetch calls to REST APIs will be stored in the API directory. In the environment file I'm saving various properties needed in our app. Since we are building a full stack app, we'll work with the database for demo purposes. I'm not going into details since these are just some basic interactions with SQLite. SQLite is an external dependency. As per Dino's best practices, I'm storing all third-party libraries in a dependencies file. Dino doesn't have a centralized mechanism to manage dependencies and you can easily import these directly from the internet anywhere in the project. Back to fetching data, we'll use the movie database API to get information about some TV shows. We'll use the DTO to clearly state the object structures and the a couple of fetch calls to search or get the TV shows airing today. In the index.ts file, we'll add some logic to populate the homepage. This code will be executed on the server by Dino and the browser will receive plain HTML to be rendered in the page. Later, we'll be able to inject data from database here as component properties. Note that we are defining the HTML elements using JSX. This is possible because under the hood, Fresh uses Preact to compute resulting HTML. If you are not familiar with it, Preact is a lighter version of React which exposes the familiar basic React API. So we'll have access to things such as event listeners or hooks. You'll see that event listeners will work as expected only when the components are defined in the islands folder. Let's quickly define a header component with a basic logo and a couple of navigation links. Sadly, Fresh lacks a templating or a layout solution which is pretty common in other libraries. This means that we'll need to manually add the header component in all route components if you want them to be displayed in the page. With the navigation links in place, we should also add some basic routes. As I mentioned, Fresh uses the file system routing which is pretty intuitive. For now, I'm creating some basic page components for the find and the today endpoints. This is also a good time to mention that I'm using Tailwind to style my components since it's suggested as a default when setting up the project. Tailwind is a CSS framework which allows you to rapidly build and style UI directly in the HTML. It provides a wide range of utility classes and there is a lot of community support behind it. I for one am not a big fan of it and I prefer styling in isolated CSS modules, preferably with SAS on top of it. It's time not to discuss handlers. Routes consist of two parts the page components we already saw, and handlers which are functions covering HTTP methods. These are running on the server and are the best place for you to fetch data needed to populate the pages. Whenever the user will access the today route, the get handler will be called. Then, the handler function will return the result of the render method to the browser. Information fetched in here will be passed down to the preact component as props. One interesting thing I'd like to outline here is that, by default, 
no JavaScript will be shipped to the client. All the rendering will happen just in time on the edge and the browser will receive only the resulting optimized HTML. Getting back to the preact component, we still have access to all the nice features the library has to offer. I'm defining a state value to figure out if there are any other shows airing today and I'm using this value to conditionally render some UI. I'll skip over all the JSX stuff since it's not really of interest considering the current topic, but you can find more details about JSX in the video I'm linking into the top right corner. After all is done, we are able to render the title of the TV shows airing today. Of course, we want this to look better, but I also want to be able to add some of these shows to my watching list. This requires browser interaction, so we'll create a new TV show component in the islands folder. The islands architecture reasoning is that interactivity should be conceptually decoupled and injected in a separate step in the progressively enhanced HTML. So, instead of delivering to the client statically generated content built on the server and then fully hydrate the app, the behavior is added in an optimized manner without the need to also deliver the full framework on the front end to enable hydration. So the TV show component will receive as properties the show object and the boolean flag to decide if the component is interactive or not. We'll render the poster image and the show name in a basic HTML structure and conditionally render an add button. Notice that we are able to reliably register a non-click event here. Say I didn't declare the component in the islands folder. In that case, the event handler would have not been triggered. In the onAddClick function, notice that we are making a post request to an API endpoint. We'll work on this implementation in a second. For now, just know that whenever a button is clicked, a post request will be triggered. Back on the TV shows airing today page, we'll replace the show names with the newly created TV show component. To wrap up this functionality, we'll need to implement the logic handling the post request and adding the show into a watching list in the database. Under the route slash API folder, I'm going to create a TypeScript file named my shows. Notice that, since this is conceptually a REST call and it will most likely return some sort of JSON, we don't need JSX, therefore the file can simply end up in .ts instead of .tsx. We're exporting the usual handler object with the post function property, which will be triggered when the request reaches the server. You should do some validation in this step and then we are simply persisting the show details in the database. Since we have this information stored, we we can retrieve it when the user first accesses the app. I'm defining a get handler where I'm fetching the shows from SQLite. Then I'm passing the shows as a property to the home component and the flow is complete. We can view the shows, add them to our watching list and see the list when accessing the home page. One small fix I need to add is to make sure that the SQL structure is created. Usually you'd make sure that the infrastructure and the configuration is in place at startup. We can use the dev.ts and the main.ts files to execute such code. To finish the implementation, I'll quickly go through creating the find page. I'm defining a new search box component in the islands folder. This is going to be a simple input field with an on key app event listener. When the user presses the enter key, we'll navigate to a find nested route and we'll perform the search on the movie database API. You probably noticed that the search key is passed in the URL as a path variable. Fresh, like other similar frameworks, allows you to extract values from URLs. Inside the find folder, I'm defining a new file with the search string between the brackets. Then, in the handler, we'll be able to easily access that value. This pretty much sums up building a small app with Fresh. Fresh might not be a production-ready tool, and it might lack a lot of the features Next.js or Svelte Kit is offering. However, such experiments are useful, and they should be always encouraged. We were able to get to this point in front of development because somebody thought that the DOM API is not great and came up with jQuery. Then somebody came up with a better declarative way to update the DOM and so on and so forth. I think that Dino has a lot of potential and I like the direction in which they are going. Before wrapping things up, there is one thing we need to do. We can leverage the fact that Fresh is built on top of Dino and use Dino Deploy to seamlessly push our app to the edge. So once you created a free account, you'll end up in the dashboard. Click on the big blue button to add a new project. As a prerequisite, you need to check in your code into GitHub and link your GitHub account to Dino Deploy. Then, in the new project wizard, select your project, the deployment branch, and the main entry point into the app. Click on the link button, and that's pretty much it. After a few seconds, the setup should be done, and you can access your app at one of the two public URLs. And now we are done. If you've made it this far, please consider adding a comment, liking the video, and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.